בדף קרן, אל חסידים, חסידים אין משפחה, בדף קרן זיצן אף אין תיש. ואת קרמן צ'וקה, ואת נבלה, ואת ניקולאי אבר, you know, each one has to be able to sit and, and realize, this is another whole subject, <laughs> agree to disagree, yeah. that's it, דובסטה נבלה, זה היה נבלה. דובסטה קרמן צ'וקה, זה היה קרמן צ'וקה, דובסטה ניקולאי אבר, זה היה ניקולאי אבר, each one has to be true to, ראובן שמעון לוי, יהודי יסוכי, each one is different ways, how you bring out your discussions. Welcome to Homesick for Lubavitch, a podcast where we explore Lubavitch identity in the year 2024. My name is Ben Siafson, and I will be your host. Let's begin. Alrighty, we are here in the holy days of Tishri in Crown Heights with Rabbi Yaakov Winner, the Mashbia in Lubavitch. YG, famous YG, Yeshivagdala of Australia, which uh, for me was the first Yeshiva I encountered as a young boy coming from Hong Kong to Australia. I still remember very vividly the, it's a library, no, where the Shluchim learn with the, with the, with the elementary school boys in the library. And uh, your wife and my mother were friends. Um, I think from before Australia, yes. And uh, so I remember you very well from uh, those years. It's almost, it's almost 30 years now. Hmm. How about that? Anyway, I heard that you were here in, in Crown Heights for Tishrei. And I asked you if you'd make some time to come on the podcast. Um, I had to convince you, but, uh, but here we are. But here we are. Anyway, uh, It, I, I think I think it probably goes it probably would be fair to say that at this point you're probably from the longer standing mashfim in the Lubavitch Yeshivas. wouldn't that be true could be could be could be uh, what did you say it was 35 years I came to Australia Nissan Tofshimentes were you mashpia before then already no no I taught see this in Adara Torah for a while uh-huh I taught some chassidus when I was a bocher on shlichus to California. Actually, your uncle, mm-hmm. Levy, was in, was in California in high school, and I taught him. Mm-hmm. He was in a class. You were a bocher then? Yeah. Ah, so bocher used to do that back in the day also, teaching and filling out positions. If they needed. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's the same, same problem then as we have now, um, or the same, same need. Uh, did you did you expect to be a mashpia growing up was that something that you saw in your future um I always enjoyed Bar Hashem learning see this mm-hmm. and I had a geschmack in it and when I was in Koilu I got a couple of offers to become mashpia uh-huh so I figured that's probably what my schlichus is uh, so that was going to be my next question you saw you saw being a mashpia as a form of schlichus definitely uh-huh Uh-huh. When I, I wrote to the Rebbe that um, the people in, in Australia, Rabbi Groner, Oliver Shalom, Rabbi Yitzhak David Groner, was Rabbi Chaim Gutnik, Rabbi Yossel Gutnik, Sheikh, yeah. so they all came to New York and they met with me and spoke to me and they offered me to come to Yeshiva Gedewa. There was no mashpia before, and, huh? There was no mashpia. There was diff- Rabbi Avram Berbosovsky was a mashgiach in Chassidus, but only part of the day. Rabbi Avram Glick, even today, Is right. teaching see this at night right but there wasn't anybody with the title mashbia uh-huh. so I wrote to the Rebbe he Imlin soya bishlichus betura mashbia be Yeshiva Gedeila of Melbourne uh-huh. and the Rebbe online the word lin soya and the rest and I'm there since then Baruch Hashem that's shlichus one second why didn't he underline it bishlichus I don't know Tachlis, that's it. Tachlis, you gotta go. You gotta go. But he, di- he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't disagree with the Vart of Shlichus. Right. Okay. There's a famous story with Rabbi Shleim Mezachi. I don't know the details, but, uh, but he wrote to the Rebbe something about this, if this is considered Shlichus, being a Mashbiya. Right. And the Rebbe answered him, yes, I don't know the details. He says it many times. I forgot to brought him. Right. Why is it Negea? Why is it Negea? It's very Negea. First of all, 
I had, when, when, when I was asked to become a mashpia, there was two other yeshivas that asked me, but there was a cheshman, I, mean, I, I don't like talking about myself, but the Rebbe says in a couple of places, was weiter begashmis als nente beruchnis, that there's an akuda of shlichas, dafke was weiter, the further you go, and the Rebbe said, was weiter begashmis als nente beruchnis, so it's my favorite part of the cheshman, is that, you know, you're going far away, that's Pshat Shlichus. You're going, we're sending you somewhere. Uh-huh. So you like the idea that it's far away? Yes, it's very important to me. And, I, and if you know, it's all about the ideology for staking this for him. I'm trying to understand though why, why? Because this this is a this is a parsha that's that's a very large parsha. I don't know. I think there's still that tension today where you'll have people who are you'll have people who are let's say teachers maybe right after they get married. But then they want to go on shlichus, right? And then they're convinced, no, no, no. There's a shlichus here in teaching. But it, it like, Lama Zogin, it's not shlichus. Lama Zogin, it's not shlichus. Who's who's going to teach? So, so saying, why do we have to? Why, what 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 are we trying to uh, get to with 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 with, with encompassing these things? In I, I, I'm not against it. I'm just trying to understand. Okay. I, I just want to say in general, everything I say is not necessarily, you know, 100% someone could disagree with what I'm saying. Is, yeah, so that, that, so, that is the first disclaimer on this okay, podcast. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you very much. The second thing is, you know, like when it comes to answers, there's, there's, it, it could take a long time, but get ready, get set, go. So first of all, you have to understand, in the Mems, the Rebbe was speaking about Shlichus, like you cannot imagine. Like for example, we'll say Mem Zayin. I was by a Febrengin, Chai Soda, Tosh Mem Zayin, was the Kines HaShluchim, and the Rebbe gave out a cry by Febrengin, Eden, Geit Aru Yishenem Tain Develt Fa Yiddishkeit. Like it was all about Shlichus, and the whole Sikh is about Shlichus, and the Chiddush of the Fidik Rebbe in Shlichus, and he's giving out the cry, we're responding to the cry, be a part of the revolution. Mm. And the Rebbe is saying, go out, conquer the world for Shlichus, for Yiddishkeit. So that was Chai Yisora Mem Zayin. By Yishlach Mem Zayin, similar, whole Fabrengen is about Shlichus, Shlichus. That's the Chivas Hadoyer. That's what everyone has to be doing. And there was another Fabrengen, Pinchas. So, 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 so just to locate your 770 Bachar this time. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is, there was a Fabrengen, Pinchas, that every single person of this generation is Kiryanit, Kiryanit, the Igrisi, Iul Havi Pavanka, you got the orders to go out in shlichus and, and do what you have to do. Lech l'chom emtes. I'm just saying, so Shabbos after Shabbos, the Rebbe is talking about shlichus. So, you know, this and with all new? the brachas. And this was new. It wasn't, this is new I, to the I, Mems. I, 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 I'm telling you what I remember. The Sikh told us, I think, Memches. Mm-hmm. The Rebbe is talking about v'yit l'cha. So it's brachas and brachas. I have to say that for a normal bacher, Sitting by Fabreng and being by the Rebbe's Fabreng and Shabbos after Shabbos, and he's speaking about Shlichas, it's like you're telling yourself you have to be an idiot not to, not to go on Shlichas. Uh-huh. Now, one other very important point is in this system, you become a your Bachar, you go on Shlichas, yeah? The Bachar. Right. So, so, what's the difference between before you went on Shlichas and after you went on Shlichas? So, I would say that you feel it as a deeper connection to the Rebbe. Shluchi shall Adam Right. So that's the answer to your question. One answer is you're sitting there week after week and the Rebbe is saying shlichus. And the second answer is you want that deeper relationship that you feel that the Rebbe has with shluchim. Shluchi shladim kemaisi. There's a chassid. And then the shluchi shladim kemaisi. And, and you feel it. And it, it's part of it. It's a deeper bond. The Rebbe nem is for the shluchim. I'm a shlich the Rebbe. I'm just saying. It, it's a chayv and it's a shlich. And you want that. So in your mind, if 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 you didn't have, for example, the story of Shlomo or if you didn't have this this precedent of of a, a mashpia being considered a shliach, or the dogma, if you were a mashpia here locally in Karnaitzers, you can't say vos vos weiter, you know, is 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 more connected. You would, you 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 wouldn't be open to being a mashpia. Like what what. I, I think it goes without saying that it is a shlichus. I know there's a story with uh-huh. with Kines HaShluchim, with Rabbi Tenenbaum, you know, whatever. That he, he didn't give some people the, the kuntris, 
but today I think it's considered a shlichus. What I'm asking, what I'm asking is more that I'm asking about definitions more. Like, what, what is what is what? Like, what what does it mean? What does it mean to be a shliach, and what does it mean to be a mashpia? Is it hainu hach? Is it two separate things? What, what do these things mean? So I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I think. Even though we're going into dangerous territory now about labels, so so let's take away you know definitions. We're not, we're not okay. So the, so in my humble definition, yeah. a shliach from Reb meant as the cooks of the Reb Mal's time by boss. You have a boss, right? You write to the Rebbe, let's say weekly or monthly, Rebbe. And I'm going to say, especially when the Rebbe says everyone's a shliach. So, so let me explain something. We're not talking about if you're official and everything, okay? Right. So let's say your name is Beryl Shmerel. You're not talking about Chabad House. Right. So let's say your name is Beryl Shmerel. And I hope I'm not saying Kfir over here. <laughs> okay. Kfir is very good ratings for the podcast. <laughs> okay. So... I might get stoned by some some people in the organization. So I'm going to tell you like this. Uh-huh. I believe that if you're a Yid and you write to the Rebbe once a week, once a month, and your name is Beryl Schmel and you have a store on Kingston Avenue, a food store or a grocery store, and you say, whenever I saw somebody a new face, I said Shalom Aleichem to him and I smiled to him. Right. And I asked him, where are you eating for Shabbos? And you should know Rebbe... I, I, I invite a lot of people to my house every single Shabbos. I look at my store as Avram Avinu's tent. That's what my store is. The store is a front. Really, I'm on shlichus. I'm being the kind of people. I smile to everybody because I, because I think about you and I know you want me to, to uplift people. I see my life in this store as mamish shlichus. And Rebbe, this week I got 10 people to put on film. I got five people to keep Shabbos. And I'm going to keep on having that in mind in the store. And whatever I got from stock, I'm giving 15% a try for sure, no problem. Mm-hmm. Your man on Kingston, Shmerel Beryl. Mm-hmm. I believe that person's a shlich of the Rebbe. And he looks at the Rebbe as a shlich. Now, is there a mile in official shlichas? Of course, the Rebbe said that many times, the people that are Rishmi. Okay, but we're not talking about that. We're saying in general, a shliach meant you like the Rebbe said, everyone's a shliach. But we're talking honest over here. You understand? That's the main point. You're an honest person that sees the Rebbe as your boss. The Rebbe is the boss of your life. Mm-hmm. You're a shliach of the Rebbe. And you're living your life as the Rebbe's undercover agent on Kingston Avenue. Maybe not even out undercover. Right. That's the main point. I, I guess I guess the question that comes from that is, um, when you, when you loosen the definitions of something, to to be more inclusive or to, you know just to mean more, to be more encompassing. Um, I feel like you do. Like, okay. What like what what's the core of it? You know what I mean. So, what's what what what's what's the core of it? You're talking. Uh, I I know you're a mashpia. Like you're talking a little bit about the spashtos of it. Okay, so, so now, the of the thing? okay, so now we go we go deeper. 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 I really believe a real shliach has to be twenty four seven. Okay. Twenty four seven, and if people get into a discussion, I, I just want to give again a disclaimer. This is so not important right now. In a way, I hope you forgive me. The audience, <laughs> because I, I didn't think we'd get into this whole thing. But anyways, I didn't plan it. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm not ambushing you. Okay, okay, good. So let me just say, deeper. I believe the Rebbe's view is a shliach is twenty four seven shliachas. Yeah. And what does that mean? And how could you explain it to a simple person? Simple. Let's say you're, you live in Eretz Yisrael. If you live in Eretz Yisrael, you're already a target. Somebody can kill you. Look what happened in the Chumash Islam last year. Right. So there's a shtikum mesiras nefesh in the etzim zach that you're living in Eretz Yisrael. There's no question about that. But even somebody in Eretz Yisrael, if you ask him a question, is there a difference between somebody who's a civilian and military? Of course there is. Right. The military is on the front lines, he's fighting the war, and he put himself in a position that he's on call 24-7. Yeah. So it's the same thing over here. You have people that... You, you can't buy insurance. You can't. No, seriously, you can't buy health insurance or life insurance if you're a soldier in the army. It's it's it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's provable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so in other words, if we really want to talk to the real real definition of shlichus, the way I think the Rebbe really wanted the, the, the what's called with the real title shlichus, it means you're twenty four seven, avoid this You're in the military. All right. 
Yeah, I, I, I and I, you're living a life of public service. I so okay. Now, so now I think you're drilling down more because, you know, somebody once told me, oh, "Look, this podcast is is a form of shlichus," and I said, "Absolutely not." Why not? Why don't? No, it's not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not offended by you saying that. I'm not. I'm not uncomfortable with you. I'm not uncomfortable. It's more. I I grew up in a Chabad house. I grew up with parents who are shlichus on the other side of the world from where they grew up. Um, I, as a child or as a, as a, as a young boy, I, I knew only half of what they were struggling with. And that's to me what shlichus is. And they're not the only ones that I saw. I've seen other shlichim. Like, you know, shlichus is, to me, like you said, um, it's a setting aside of priorities. Like you don't prioritize, you, you, your, your priorities are not your own. The priorities that are given to you and you live your life around that entirely. That's what shlichus is. So the fact that I have a podcast that some people enjoy and that sometimes I go out of my way to do to me you start calling that shlichus then then you know everything is shlichus and then nothing is that that's why that's why I'm pushing on it yeah so I, I think it's important so, so, so okay so let's go back to the conversation let me take a pause for a second I want to give you a bracha yeah it's a new year uh-huh. so there's new amshachas er chodosh so I think the big schus this whole vart of homesick for Lubavitch <laughs> That that every time we say the word Lubavitch, and any time there's an occasion we could talk about the Rabbeim, it's a schus. So l'chaim l'chaim, barachat adnei l'mechirum shakel nivivari. Amen. We're saying l'chaim on a shakel, but it should be a new year with new energies, and you should go mechayl l'choyl in great ways. Amen. Thank you, thank you. I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not. I wasn't uncomfortable with someone saying that. It's more that I, I'm uncomfortable with 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 messing with words. And you I, like definitions, clarity. I, I think I think it serves everybody. I think it's good to know what's what. It's good to know what's what, and and to know where, you know where you stand and where those things stand. And it's better to know as the house by them, but because at least that gives you something to strive for, as opposed to to just try to envelop everything into your own you know whatever you know whatever I'm doing is what this thing is, and 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 then you know we don't know we don't know where we are anymore. I agree with you totally. I want to bring an example. Bechal, when you have a discussion, you have to define the terms. Yes. The Alter Rebbe and Peirik Aleph of Tanya, Tanya is amazing. Yes. So one of the things in, in Peirik Aleph, straight away the lesson, he says, if someone's going to come and ask a question, how could you say that a, that a tzaddik is this? Right. He just says, that was all Shema Mushal. The Shema Toya, the real thing is, I'll show you one, two, three places. Yeah. So it doesn't make a difference what it says in all the other places, but this is the real definition. Right. So you see, besides for the break cut of the Alte Rebbe, but we see that in order to get into a discussion about anything, we got to define the terms. Yeah. So that's why it's very, very important. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. And also, even though in that regard, and I think this is this supports our case over here, even though in that regard, by doing what he's doing, he's not making it easier on anybody. He's making the tzaddik impossible, right? He's not... No, he's not like saying that the emissive shot of a tzaddik is everyone's a tzaddik. Not for carrot. What I'm talking about here is a tzaddik that's out of everybody's reach. Exactly. This week's episode is brought to you by This World is a Garden, a new film and concert production by Yuvla Media. Based on the Rebbe's first talk, Basil Ghani, the production tells the story of the Chabad vision lasting over 300 years to see this world as God sees it, as his garden. Combining beautiful cinematography with a live performance of a string quartet, This World is a Garden is a meditation on hope and holding on to a vision as time passes by. This production is now available to be shown at your Chabad house and community. Share the message and vision of Basi Ligani with your community in a way you never have before. For more information, please visit thisworldisagarden.com. But, I love but, but, what you're saying right now because... This is my, we might reach this point of striving for excellence, demanding high, more. Right. It's it's a language which is bechalal in constant forgetting from yeah. the dialogue, in general. Yeah. And what you're talking about is let's stop diluting it. Yeah. Or dumbing it down. We got to get to the real thing. Yeah. I mean th- that that is the 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 irony, or the the paradox of of of, of today's times, where on one hand. On one hand, you know, it seems like people are doing their own thing and 
they're not you know they're not they're not following orders they're not there okay, people are looser they're, but on the other hand and in many ways it goes together precisely because people are not just going with the team or going with the flow they need and they respect definitions you know tell me what it <clears throat> tell me what it is and either I'll get to it or I won't but but let me know what it is don't don't hack me a chinik you know I'm not interested in 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 in, in fluff and I, and I think that is a growing phenomenon in Lubavitch, but in general, in general, people, like, you know, when, 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 when things are coasting along, when society is coasting along, when your community is coasting along, when I, you ask me what the podcast is about, when identity coasts along, it's not so negative. You say this, you say that, because I hate whatever. I'm just going with the flow. But when, I, when I'm not going with the flow, or I feel that I can't go with the flow, or I think the flow is nutty, and now I'm kind of stuck on my own. The next thing I need to know is, what's what? I need to know what's what. Clarkite. Clarkite, exactly. And like you brought up Tanya. I mean, I, it's something that I thought about is, the first thing the Alter is doing is, he's making everything impossible. So what, what's a shot? Isn't this a safer Shalbanin? Isn't this a safer that's supposed to make it Karve Lecha? No, because you need to know what's karve lecha. Like don't don't hack don't hack yourself a chinik that that, that karve lecha is everything. This is karve lecha, right? I know you said a huge statement, but we might have to leave for later. Uh That it seems like he's making impossible when the objective is actually pun fakert ki karve lecha, like you said. But but titzadik doesn't have to be karve lecha. Fine. The Tanya saying the titzadik is karve lecha. No. Right. But but then you have chapter fourteen, Pedi Kedalid, where where the Alter Rebbe tells you how you have to simulation, right? You have to do stuff that it's cool sad. Cool Yeah. So is that part also? Yeah, but I, I would say Viter, but it's the same idea. You could because if you if you if you if you shelve it entirely, then 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 the then everything else becomes. It's a it's a tough thing because you you need to define what's what. And you do, and the impossible needs to be the impossible, but you can't say that because it's impossible now I'm going to forget about it. I'm just going to focus on the possible because then the possible becomes very shvach, and right. <laughs> so you need to know you need to know what's not shaykh and what you would what your kind of your your dream your dream list so to speak, and then that 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 gives tension to to what is possible. Anyway, you're touching you're, like, on, you're touching on very deep. Deep concepts, because really what it boils down to is we state Mercedes, Daf Streiben of Yehudi Law, but they to halten by Yehudi Tato. Right. So is that like you said? It says it says this in a mimer. This is a Chassidish word. No, no, it's from Kuntzitz Chaim. Uh-huh. And and the word is this tension has to always exist between the aspiration, right, and the realistic way you're gonna reach. Right. By right. the way, there's, there's a Geshmaka Maisa. Should I say it because it's it's connected to Simchas uh, Teira. Yeah. This Amais I heard from uh, Reb Melech, one of my Mishpiyim. Ah, perfect. Feeds right in, yeah. Yeah, so he, it's a very Gishmak Amais. It's a famous story. The, the, it's printed, I think, in Migdal A's, I think. Anyways. You heard this from him, though. I heard this from him. All right. There was a Simchas Teira after, yeah, after the Maggit passed away. And for a certain time, the Mendel Haradokar was the Alter Rebbe's Rebbe. Right. And it was Simchas Teira. But was I'd say few of the the doctor considered him as Rebbe. No. Yeah, but I'm saying I don't. Because that's how he writes he about it. it Fosha, but he writes about it in Simon Chav Zayin that that like when he passed away that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's definitely considered a Rebbe of the Alter Rebbe. Right. Yeah, yeah. But then there's a question: Why isn't he counted in the Shalshelis? Right. Whatever the Rebbe spoke about that a couple of times, but this time I said to Simchas Teira. The Alter Rebbe is there, the Mendel Haradok is there, right. and everyone's waiting for the Mendel Haradok to come out for a coffee. Right. And the Chassidim went and knocked on the door of the Mendel, and he said he can't come out yet. And the reason he can't come out yet is because he sees a hundred Pirush Menata Eresa on a Halnish Dabai. He didn't reach it, so until he absorbs it, and, and you know, he can't come out. So the Chassidim went to the, to the Alter Rebbe, and they said, listen, we're holding my altar. He doesn't want to come out. And we're all waiting. You know, what's going to happen over here? So the altar said, tell the Mendel that he has to come out because the chassidim, he's a rebbe, and the chassidim that are waiting. And if he doesn't come out, he's going to have to go to a din tera. And he's going to be the, the, the altar who wrote the Shulchan Aruch 
Bitzibi from the from the Mizrachi Magid. So he was known as the Goyin in in, in Halacha. So so he t- is like he's told it, he told the Chassidim to tell his Rebbe that he's going to have to come to the Tzedek is not coming out, okay. and that and that the Rebbe is going to be the the, 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 the judge. So they told this to Mendel, and he said, "Oh, I think he said Abzalmanke is the dying, you know, the judge. No worries, he's coming." So each one presented his case. The chassidim said, "It's time for Atarisi, you're not coming out." He said, "I saw hundred perushim on the chalnish the which I do." So the Halter told him, "One answer is mitzara svara, and one answer is psa I don't know which one he said first. We'll say first the Maisa, that there was a couple. They lived on a mountain. Sorry." They lived under, under a mountain. It's a, it's a mountain and there's a valley. And it would rain and there was snow and it would melt. And they were living on the, on the floor of the valley and there was blood there and it was terrible and they couldn't live there. So they decided to have to move up the mountain. So they, they to, in other words, to live not in the bottom, Mamish, but like a couple of feet on the mountain. Anyways, they're living like that. But then it, it snowed or rained or something. And there's still blood going through their shack or something. So the husband looks up at, at the top of the mountain and he starts crying. He tells his wife, there's no, there's no point over here. We're still getting blood, to, you know, we're still getting stuff, dirt in the, in the, in the thing. And we're never going to reach the top. So the wife told him, oh, but from blood is matter. In other words, we're out of the bottom we're all gathered. We're not sitting in it. We're not sitting in it. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, you have to be besimcha. And the Alter Rebbe said, from blot is mishen aruis. We're past Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We were dealing with cheshbin avinois and with the tshuvas. And now we have to be besimcha. So even if you're not holding by the hundred levels, but from blot is mishen aruis. And from them, that from them besimcha. And the svara he told him why we have to start now today is because the sight. How do they say in English? The sight is always further than the reach. Right. So what's going to happen after you get all the hundred pirushim? Then you can see another hundred pirushim. So right. it's never going to end. Right. So therefore you have to come out to Hakafis. So Melech said this Maisa, Zeyla Gishmak and Maisa. And in Avod it's Gishmak because, you know, you did accomplish something with your life, you know. Baruch Hashem. Everybody can look at themselves and say, from what is Manaris, I... The, the, the mountain to the top of the mountain seems impossible. Oh, but from blood is my reason. And, and it's an aspiration. I don't know why I said this. My say, we'll come to that coffin. No, you said it because we're talking about Tihi Tzadik. Yeah, so. Tihi Tzadik is a mountain top. Yeah, so in other words, there's always this, this idea of aspiration. Right. And we have to have that aspiration. And that always triggers us or inspires us to go higher and higher. Right. But, but on the one hand, we should be, you have to be happy. You accomplished something. We did get somewhere. So it's, it's, it's great that you brought up Hermelech. We wanted to speak about your Mashbim growing up. Um, what, before we speak about Hermelech specifically, and I'm sure you had other Mashbim as well, what what did a Mashbim mean back in the day when you had the Rebbe and Fabrengans and that whole, that all, all of that going on? What, what, what exactly was a Mashbim's role? Or, what, what, or how, did you, how did you position them? In the orbit and the uh, of Lubavitch. <laughs> this is a very, I don't know, a loaded question, because there's so much to talk about. Because we have to be here a whole night. Because we have to talk about today's bacher and what the bacher was forty years ago, forty five years ago. So again, we're gonna have to start with a disclaimer. Like first of all, today, and I'm not saying it is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm saying is it reality? You could have a bacher who's 18 years old and he asks him, do you care about me? Right. And you're looking at him and you say, did I ever ask if Melech cares about me? Or if Rabbi El Khan cares about me? It was like, what are you? It has nothing to do with it. I'm right. a bacher. I'm here to learn. And he's a good teacher. Now does it, and it goes without saying that I believe he does care about me. You understand? But some mashpiyim were warmer, some mashpiyim were a bit colder. But it was a question by you, not about the mashpiyim, if he cares about you or not. Uh-huh. Now again, I'm going to kafir. I'm, I'm going to be really messed up. Today, I'm going to. Uh, you must show that you care. There's why no that, question why about is, it. Why is that kafir? So because the real question, I, I'm going to say a statement now, uh-huh. but we're going to have to put it on hold because. You start asking about Melech. Right. Today we have a problem in yeshivas. Are we here to learn? The Rebbe says in the Sikha of Achash Pesach Tavshin 
Lamed Vov, that a yeshiva is Miloshan yeshiva, the Iker job description of a yeshiva is Mizitzt, Miloshan yeshiva, Mizitzt to Right. And in any institution of the world at that age of 18 year olds, you know, what are, what are you doing? You going to law school, medical school, accountant school? Okay, let's get on with it. So, so this is with Aflan and Taylor, I'm with Aflan and Chsidis, and Mashpia today is, 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 is a very difficult job right. because you should give a shoot them that are inspiring, that are deep, that are, that are, that are funny also in a way because that's I'm besimcha, and you have to show that you care. Now, I want to just make it clear the job is Chanechel Narapidakai. Today we have a line that everyone says, Basheru Shom. So we're dealing with all sorts and many different levels, but that's why it's much, much harder because when I, when you asked me a question. So now let's go 45 years ago. You're saying, my Mashpiyim. They, they were into teaching Chassidus. They were into teaching Chassidus and those Bacham that were interested took from the Mashpiyim. And those that were not interested didn't take so much from the Mashpiyim. And, and that's the answer to your question. No, I was asking more. I was asking more. Klape, Klape both the Rebbe. Right, like, like you know, there's, there's the Fabrengen, there's the, the life, the chutzur of the Rebbe, and and like, as a mashpia inside that or outside that or separate or not boring compared to that and so on, and then also like we've, we've been we, like we've been discussing earlier in this conversation, you have this whole idea of shluchas, and these mashpiyim, you know, they're not, let's say they're shluchim on some spiritual sense, they're not. Yeah, there must be them. They're not. They're not. There, there are shluchim out there. There's like, how did you, how did you see them? Were were they big figures? Were they important figures? Were they, I don't know, like. So, I think it's very much dependent on the makabel. Uh huh. And. I could tell you, my shver Allah shalom was Reb Nason Garari. Right. He told me once a line. He was a big Moscow in Chassidus. He told me once we, a line. We had someone other Moshe, your nephew. From Detroit spoke about him. Yeah, so he told me once a line. I'm all retracted. I'm a king in Glach to Atmos. The Noch of the head, I'm the form say the Stalshals. He thought that. He, he told me this once. Uh-huh. I'm all retracted. I'm a king in Glach to Atmos. He can go directly to Atmos. Then I realized we need to say the Stalshals. Uh-huh. What he meant to say was, you need a good teacher, you need a good mashpia that to show you the way. So the answer is it all, it, it, it's all one thing. In other words, but how did you see it as a boy? I'm trying to understand what the what what this what society was like back in the day in 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 in, in Lubavitch. Growing so, up, growing so, up, the Mashpiyim were were big figures. They were important figures, or they or did they just kind of melt into the the surroundings? They of, were much more important uh-huh. than they are today. Uh-huh. And 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 the, a bachar, what was their role? Is my question. What was their their role? Is to teach chassidus. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a word that I love very, very much. It's printed behind the p- Samar Vov. And it says that when the Rebbe Rashab finished Samar Vov, he took out Bendiktin right, yeah, yeah. and they had a Lechaim. Yeah, yeah. Stam Agav, we say he was in Lovangati, Vaisa, Nish Gela. But Bendiktin is Gela. So on special occasions, we get to look at Bendiktin. Bendiktin is gross. <laughs> I, the only time I had it was taco when I finished Samachvav or finished Samachvav and it was the only time to my knowledge that I passed out from uh, Pasha they destroyed me so and, they, and it's really not good so when the Rebbe Rashab it's a matter of taste it's full of, it's full of sugar sugar and alcohol is not a good idea for anybody okay anyway yeah so they took out Bendiktin the Rebbe Rashab with the feet we'll, we'll, we'll get this episode sponsored by Bendiktin <laughs> The Rebbe Rashab, they took up the team with Lachaim. And then I think the Friedrich Rebbe says a line over there, like, maybe you could say, more than the, 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 more than the, the young one wants to take from the dust, from the mother calf, the calf wants to give. Right. And then he says a line like this, and I think it's the Friedrich Rebbe's word. And the Tate, had genommen, geboren, gesiedem, who, who said this? The Rebbe Shab said this. No, the, the Friedrich Rebbe. Are you saying this, about the Rebbe Shab? About his father, the Rebbe Shab. He took. He took. On this occasion, yeah, yeah. So he was saying. At the Tate, the Rebbe Shab had been born in the city, and he was born in the city. And the city had been born in the city, and he was born in the city. 
So the, my, my father, the Rebbe Shab, took chassidim that were born chassidim, but he made them for true chassidim, not just that you're born a chassid. With Samach Vav. Yeah, I think so. Like through Aved and through Samach Vav. But, but, but the chassidim, what they gave to my father, so to speak, is they took paper chassidim, that means what's printed on a paper, and made it live, made it real. Uh-huh. That's the Lashon. So, right. why did I say this one minute? You're talking about the importance of Mashpia. Yeah, so that's the same thing. In other words, uh, you could learn, but when you hear it from Mashpia and a good teacher, you can't compare it. But was there space? Ba- was there space back then for for there to be this kind of mamutza, like, sp- like in between, like hearing directly from the Rebbe? If I bring in, I'm sure some people thought they understood, some people thought they didn't, and some people may believe like they did. I don't know. I'm sure there's a mix. But, you know, you're serious, Buck, you're hearing directly from, you're hearing my mind straight from the Rebbe, that what's a Mashpia's role, like, to help you understand it? Like, in a way, like, is there, is there, sometimes when you're in this, when you're so close to the sun, there's no room for anything else. That's my question. So, I, I, I would say that, that, you know, the Rebbe told, Rebbe Pliskin, he right. asked the Rebbe about Fabringing. Right. And the Rebbe said, you know, you have to say stories about Chassidim. Yeah. Not only Rebbe stories. Right. Because when you hear a story about a Chassid, it's closer to the, you know, mortals. Did they listen to that, though? It doesn't seem like that's what the culture was like back then, though. I know the story, but... Okay, so that that's my answer. So when you when you see a person, like uh, my, my first mashpia was like Rebbe Lipsker. Uh-huh. It was called the Mashpia. We had him for two years in Ocean Parkway. And you see the Melech Tzvibel and you see the Biel Khan, and they're living it. So it has a whole different impact. So, you, so you're saying once you encountered them, they, they, made, they meant something to you? 100%. But, but was, that the still, nor- was that the norm? People took still, Mashpia seriously back then? Maybe not enough. Maybe not enough. No, I'm saying, was there a thing, let's say, that you were going to yeshiva to learn by a certain mashpia? Was that considered a thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. But but uh, I believe those that were makablim listened, harvid and shiurim of chassidus, and the fabrengi mission. Right. And it was amazing. And what, what were they fabringing about? Were they, were they fabringing about what Rabbi just said at the last fabringing, at, at the, the, but the latest mitzvah, or, or were they still, or were they still talking about whatever they were living through? Was it was there was there what were they just basically translating what Rabbi was saying, or was there a like their own identity, own personality? You know, first of all, maybe a simple answer to your question in general is, let's say you have a father. Right. Let me give you an example. I, my, my father passed away when I was one years old, so, but I'm saying, let's say a person has a father, and his father's a chassid. So how would you answer the question, what role does your father play in, 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 in chassidishkeit? Mm-hmm. I think the answer would be huge, because sure. he represents the living, the whole the whole the whole ideology and the whole way of life. Sure. And, and the more he's a role model of all these values and principles and virtues, the more it, 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 it makes an engraving impact on, on the child. So I would say the same thing with Mashpiyim. So you asked about the Fabrengans. So I'll just... No, but I, I understand what I'm saying about a father, but a father, in many ways, the, although I think in many ways that role was diminished, at least... Uh, I think, I think it was it was it was not. Uh, it has not been celebrated as much as it should be. But a father, you grow up with him, you grow up in his house, so you see things that he's doing that are not the you know the the the, the flavor of the moment or miftzayim or whatever at the time they were saying a sicha. There's a new campaign. There's a new theme. There's a new this. Your father, you're you're watching your father get up in the morning and go daven. And shul, how how he conducts himself as a as a person, as a businessman, as a shleich, whatever it is. So you, you there is something very unique there. There's a, so that's what I'm asking about the mashpia. Was the mashpia somebody who, just you know, was a chayzer of what the Rebbe was saying and touching it up for you, or was mashpia, talking about things that you didn't hear by Fabrain? That's 
uh, you know, that's the question I'm asking. Okay, so let me just talk from my own experiences. I say I have three mashpiyim. Reber Lipsker, Zalzang Yizunt, Remelech Tzibol, Olav HaShalom, and Rebiel Khan. So I say, from Berel Lipsker, I'll be from a Kabbal Gven, I get shmak and chesed shifar bering. Because I was his Talmud in Tavshin Lamed Zayin and Tavshin Lamed Ches. Lamed Ches, the Rebbe had the heart attack. Right. And he was like, you know, in the inner circle. And by him, there was always a Fabreng, you know, by the barrel. And he caught him, you dialed Kislev before anybody was Fabreng and you dialed Kislev. And, you know, even when we got married, which was very interesting because this is like, let's say most of us got married in Mem Vav, Mem Zayin. And he was our Mashpia like way before. like, And, you know, he'd come to the, you know, apartment. Whenever we'd call him and say, we're having a Fabreng with our class, He'd come and fabreng. So he told us the gishmak and chesed fabreng, and for that I'm forever indebted to him. And the gishmak in game of the pagres, that whole idea. So that was I got from Berlin. Because of, so what I mean to say is, you have to see somebody who lives it, like Yedin Toga, you know, and you look at him, you see by him it's a celebration taka. It's not just that it says it. It's not that it's just something that's written over there. This is Tavshin Lamad Ches before the Rebbe was giving her to Fabreng every single, like, you know? Right. And he saw a Jew that lives like that, and but it's always, a, everything's a big thing, and etc. So that's Beryl Lipska. Melech Tzibu, I say, you know, at Gishmak and the Kamos from Chsidis. So, two things I want to say about Melech. His sheer, it was like you were, you were drowning in Chsidis. Right. Mar Makaymis, and quotes. And I want to give you also another example. I hope nobody takes it the wrong way. When I came from Ocean Parkway to Morristown, and I had a gishmak and chassidus with, you know, the barrel, then I went to Morristown, and I'm sitting in Melech Shir, the Melech Shir, and I don't understand what's going on. And what he says in 45 minutes is download complete. <laughs> to end my murder. Right. So I went over to him, like, when I first came to Morristown, I said, you know, what should, I, I don't understand. Right. And he tells me, Nuvoz I Whoa. So he's answering me, what can I do? And then I had to take a tape recorder, put it in my pants, sit by the shear, record the shear. In those days, chas v'shom, if you recorded somebody. And then I had to listen to the shear, write it down, and look up all the modern kaimis. And what he said in 45 minutes would take me two days to, to, to decipher and, and look up all the modern kaimis. So I'm saying... So in other words, you had to be interested. You had to you had to work hard. It wasn't easy. So the first thing with Melech is his his bikis and chassidus was unbelievable. And you looked at him as a person. He's an encyclopedia. So that's it. You want you have a question in chassidus? What does chassidus have to say about a certain subject? Put it into the machine. You get the whole story, unedited, full. You understand? That was one thing about him. And the second thing was, he was an idle person, and he had a mighty dekatsir. And he and by his fabrengans, that's why I want to tell you what a Biel style was. It was a different style than his style was. He'd say mysis. He'd talk for like 15 minutes, stories, and pause, nigun, stories. He had stories and stories of the, you know, chassidim from Amol. He knew everything and he knew mysis and he would say mysis and mysis and mysis. So his style of fabrengan was, you know, and he also would get excited. Like he used to check the Lukut Sichis. So he was shy to start off and he says, you know, Paul Wochen kommt da ruis a likut. Like there's going to be a likut that's going to be. Because <laughs> he was working on it. He was working on it and he checked it out and he was already getting excited about it. And then he'd fabring for a couple of hours interspersed with all these stories about this new gilly that came out from the Rebbe. So he was always getting excited about the latest gilly. And by fabringing also, he would speak about what the Rebbe said about the latest fabringing. One time the Rebbe spoke, I think it was an Achrusha Pesach Fabrengen, and he said, uh, and the Rebbe spoke about Yenu Shal Teira, Pnimi Sateira, instead of four cups of wine, it was for my mother. So the next Fabrengen, the, the Melech Fabrengen says, We want fear my morum balpe, we want fear my morum balpe, we want fear my morum balpe, we don't want to wait. So that was the, <laughs> the next Fabrengen. So the Rebbe said, Achmonel Slang, you're saying we want for my morum balpe, the Rebbe says, We want Mishir now. And the Melch says, I'm not even going to answer you. You sleep by Chsidis. And then he says, 
Wie kann ich schlafen? Es ist Licht in Drüsen. How could you be sleeping? It's light outside. So that's what I mean. You have a gid like that. Maybe physically light. Yeah. Not, not, not metaphorically light. No. So this so is the sun I mean. has come up. Yeah, so you have <laughs> such a person. He's the, a living example of somebody who doesn't waste a minute. A masmid. Right. That knows everything. Niglach Sidis. I believe he was the one of the greatest Tamid Chum that ever lived. Yeah. I mean, in the last, I don't know how many years, because he was a bucky in everything. Yeah. So just to give you an example, if you're sitting by Fabian, let's say, Ben Yisrael Lerman, Tavshin Yud Aleph, Tavshin Yud Beis, Tavshin Yud Gimel, and I'll go through all the years. And you're sitting over there, and, and this is what he's demanding. When are you going to start learning? And if you ask him a question, I'll see this. What should you learn? No, can you learn an era tere, tere er, biyuri azeh from the middle rem, whatever, it's all good. Sounds good, that's what he would say. So now he asked me a question, What? where does he fit in? Yeah. He fits in because he's Mr. Chassidus. And when you see a Chassid that lives with Chassidus, and that's his whole life, and Teir is his whole life, so it inspires you to be, you know, you, you want to take something, like from that person, what does it mean to be? He would say that I'm all a good if you knocked on the door of a Chassid, and the wife answered, then you'd say, Vudaman, there's Bambicho. He's, he's by the books. So did, you, did you see a stitter between Chassidus and Shlichus? One second, I, I want to talk about Rabiel, but okay. what's your question right now? Did you see a stitter between Chassidus and Shlichus? No, Chas mm-hmm. Why should there be a stitter? Why? Because, because, okay, maybe the word's not stitter, attention. Which is a kind of stitter. I don't see attention at all. I see, I see, there's the, the ideology, there's Teres Achsidis. Right. And Teres Achsidis makes the person a better person. Right. And and Shlichus is the ultimate. You know, the Rebbe wants to be a Chassid, Yerushmayim, Belamdin, from every single Bokhar. And Shlichus is the climax, the ultimate. So, 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 so to... So that you to, dedicate your life. To show where there might be a, where there might be a, 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 a tension. Um, you know, you have a Bokhar who is... Very good at Mftsayim, let's say. You know, Kachta Mftsayim, and he's good at it. Um, but it comes at the Cheshbin of, of learning another learning another Mimer or, or, or learning a Hemshech. So, and you have a Bachar who learns a Hemshech, and it comes at the Cheshbin of being involved in the latest Mftsayim. I mean, at the end of the day, we're limited people, right? And these things, it's, it's not, I don't think it's fair to say that it all goes in a straight line necessarily. So the Rebbe, in a, in a Sicha, I think it was Yechidis, it's printed in the Kuti Sichas, Chelik Yudalad, in the Yisophis, and he says, just like the Alta Rebbe, <coughs> excuse me for a second, the Alta Rebbe writes in Tanya that there's two types of Neshamas, Mori Uvdin Tavin, right. and Mori Teira. Right. The Rebbe, in the Yechidis Tabachim, I think it was Yechidis, he says there's two types of Bachim. There's the Mori Yuvdin Tavim Bachim and the Mori Teira Bachim. So some Bachim are more wired for Mivtoyim, Maisim Tevim, and some Bachim are more wired for Teira. It's not a Stira. And the Rebbe says over there that that's Chutz the Seder. So in other words, it's built into the system, the that outside of Seder, if one Bachim is more orientated towards Maisim Tevim, go for it. Yeah. But during Seder, it's Limda Teira. Right. Yeah, but I, I, I'm just trying to put myself in, in, in those times. You have Remelech who's sitting and learning and, and knows every Maim Rebalpe. And then you have Shluchim who are talking about Shluchis and, and being with Karvidin and, 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 uh, and the Bati Chabad. And they want Bachim to come help them with their Pu'ulis. I mean, it's not, I, I think it's fair to ask if there was a, a pool. So my, my answer is that, and I hope, again, I don't want to, we're not judging anybody. I'm nothing. But I'm just making an observation to show, to answer your You're question. You're talking to Lubavitchers. They're masking at that point. Yes. <laughs> I want to make an observation that if you look at the first crew, maybe first crew, first uh, shift, first, I don't know what the word in English is, the first, line of the Shluchim and the Yuds that's a Yutes and Chof and the early Lamed they're all Chassid Shiyidin right. B'nai Teira so if you want to talk about names look at Reb Tzir or look at Reb Ruven all time 
Or look at Reb Shapsi Slabatitsky, or Reb Reb Silberstein. What's right. it? I forgot his first name. In Ithaca, so right. I'm saying these shluchim are bnei teira. Right. The the grace of bnei teira, and and the, and when they were bochem, I'm sure they were maskilim and avdim, whatever it is, a kind of chsidus and a kind of nigla, and they go, went on shlichus. So it's not a problem at all. The Rebbe later on. This is, I think it's Lech Lechot Tav So as a Bacher, as a Bacher, you didn't see us, did it? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. But but obviously there's some Bachem that are maybe not so much into learning. So for them, obviously it was more natural. Right. Because in a way you could say, what's a Shliach? Again, I don't want to get into problems over here. In in Torah terminology, a Shliach is an Askin Tziburi. Let's say. Right. He's not a Rav necessarily. So you have some shluchim that are more askonim, shluch shalom kumaisi, no problem. And you have some shluchim that are like, 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 for example, the shluchim that the Rebbe sent to Yisrael. He said the first objective was that they should become rabbonim. Right. So there's different types of shluchim, mm-hmm. like the mori teir, mori of tavin, like the Rebbe himself said. Mm-hmm. I want to just go back to the Biel for a second. Because um, I say from Rabbi Yehiel, I got a geshmak in the Eichas from Chassidus. So Rabbi Yehiel, his fabain was different. There wasn't so much stories. It was a whole, it was it was a whole long talk. You know, the, the Rebbe, you know, he'd start with the Rebbe, but but really Alter Rebbe Moshe Rabbeinu, and he'd go on for many hours. Then he'd come to the Rebbe, and it, it would it would have an unbelievable impact. His explaining. What's with this kisla? What's Martin Teira? What's Teira? What's Chassidus? And then he'd get to the Rebbe, so that was like the climax. In my days, he, he wasn't so going Rebbe, Rebbe, you know, overtly. He you wasn't. Know? He wasn't. No, that came in like later. What, what, do, you it, think, what do you think that was? Maybe because things were more obvious. He didn't feel he had to push it. It was obvious that Rebbe Yale was in guns and bottle to the Rebbe. Bittel betachlis. And, and and then the climax, let's say, for example, by Fabrengen, if it's it's two, three in the morning after he went about Moshe Rabbeinu and the Alter Rebbe and everything, then he'd, and he'd say, the ganze Sache, and that's a chafrekton, was for a chelik pol gechom in the Mreb Mzarbet. What, what kind of active role am I going to have in the Rebbe's work? So that was the climax. So in other words, how do I define my life? You're talking about shlichas. You have mashpir like the Biel. He's sitting with a fabregging for five hours, and, and the whole tachlis of the whole fabregging is, am I going to be part of the Rebbe? What, what active role am I going to have in the Rebbe's work? That's what, it, what life's all about. Mm. So it, 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 it reinforces whatever you're learning, this or whatever the Rebbe is talking about. Mm. So it sounds like that in those days, things were coming together very nicely. The... The mash the mashpim the shivas were the sh- the shivas the shivas were feeding into into shlichus, but not at the cost of the shivas, the the not at the cost of learning. And um, and shlichus 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 wasn't at the cost of learning. Learning wasn't at the cost of shlichus. Shlichus was like you were saying earlier exploding because I was talking about it putting a lot of gasoline on the fire and so learning wasn't it, learning wasn't coming at the cost of shlichus but shlichus wasn't coming at the cost of learning it seems like a very and then the spitz came the spitz chabad came it seems like this like this was before before that kofa i don't know what you mean exactly it it seems it's it almost seems like a like a like a like a time where where things things were harmonious. That's what I believe, my son, my friend. No, 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 but, but it doesn't feel like it was harmonious after that. No, let me let me let me. This I'm telling you the way I the way I understand it. Your your experience, but 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 would it be fair to say that 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 kufa didn't last all the way through the late mems? Is my question. I can't really talk about after Gimel Thomas because I wasn't. So, 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 so let me say something, which, which, and this is really we can bring because, for a couple of months. No, because because what, what I mean by Spitz, so not to just to make fun, but but Spitz about the the adamant, almost militant 
um, push of, of his gashes, you know, uber alles. And 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 shlichus uber alles like like it becomes the the it, it almost like shlichus takes over everything, and ideas of like this being like you know, you know you know you know what I'm talking about. I I think <laughs> no no no, <laughs> you know, no I'm no, not trying to get you in trouble. No you know, no, the, I think we have to. Start with certain you say this. I believe that the real push for Shlicha starts with the Rebbe Rashab. Because uh-huh. he said, Kol David, get that whole thing, that's Temchet Mirim. And the famous Sicha of Kol David. Now, what he said in that Sicha, which the Rebbe said we should all learn, in, in Tesva Velo, Tavshin Mem Test, was the Yerah, that you should learn this Sicha of Kol Yitzel David. In that sicha, the Rebbe Rashab said something, which the Rebbe speaks about that sicha and says there was a nevuah. Usually when the Rebbe speaks about that sicha and he says the nevuah, he says what the Rebbe Rashab said, that is, cherfu ikvi mishichecha, and cherfu evecha Hashem. So, and the Rebbe Rashab said there will be those that are from, but they're against Mashiach, and there are those that are not from, yeah? And the Rebbe said, you see the Nevoah that in today, whenever the Rebbe was talking, that people that are Shemit Terim, it says, but the Cher for Ikvim Meshachach, they're against Meshach. But there was another thing over there, I don't remember clearly if the Rebbe said that that's part of the Nevoah, but to me, I think it's obvious, he said, that he said a line in that Fabreng, in the Rebbe Rashab, as the Tmimim, Vuzevel and Zayn, and Zevel and Zayn, and Arba Pinus Ha'elam, when they had Durfer in the Kavon El Yene, from last day's Baruch Dir B'tchateinim. So, Sit down for a second and think. This is before World War II, before Hitler Yimach Shemay, before Stalin Yimach Shemay, before World War I. One. Yeah, before World War I. Before World War I, Sama Khalif, I think. And he's saying, and he said, Ich bin a, but he says, ich, he said, Taki, Ich bin a Muftach. Oh, in the Sikh he says, Ich bin a Muftach. When Yedrin Fashtet and Afghan Minister is not Batuach and a Muftach, he's guaranteed. So he's talking in the land of chickens and goats. Lubavitch, right. and he's saying, you know, how many times were there, third year, yeah. that you people are going to be in the four corners of the world right. and going to fulfill the covenant of last days. So it's definitely, the Rebbe made the reality of that, that the Tamimim are all over the world, on Shlichus, and, and the Rebbe lifted up the whole world for the Ebishter. Now, you have to look at it like, in other words, let's talk in a secular. You have a graduate of West Point, so military academy, call Yitzel Mechemes Beis David. So in other words, we're going back now to the original. I think where where it really starts from because is you have an individual. He's in the yeshiva, and he's brought up with the whole word. You're a tomim. You're a tomim from Teichet Mimim. And what was it all about? What's the whole purpose? And the end of it is all to take go on shlichus. That's what the Friedrich, that's what the Rebbe Rashi meant when he said call Yitzel Mechemes Beis David, which means we're bringing Mashiach. We're, we're, we're uplifting the world. So your question, your question was, when did it change? So my answer, my only answer to you is, once you start deviating from Losh Narav, that's where you get all the problems. That's all I could say. But if you if you stick to Losh Narav, then it'll save you a lot of problems. Stick to Losh Narav. <laughs> what I tell you? And, and, and have the right mashpiyim and the right teachers. The Rebbe pushed us el charav. Let's, you know. Okay, uh, okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to accuse anybody shalei befun of, uh, and I don't even have enough information to know who to accuse. And I don't even know that I'm right in the accusation. But my 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 understanding is, or what I gather, is that what you're describing up to this point is a world that seems. Marvel, marvelously, um, for lack of a better word, sane. Like it, it makes sense, and, and it seems very harmonious, where, where the yeshiva is doing its job or it has its role. Shlichus has its role. They're both growing, and and, and, and everything's on the up and up, right? That 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 that. And I'm not disputing that. That's your account of it. But then I hear and I and I gather. Um, 
and I, you know, I, I feel from, from, from things that I was taught also, there, there came a time where somehow all of that came under, under pressure or just needed to be included in, in something called his gashos. So maybe maybe a healthier way of, 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 of going about this without just, you know, hurling cheap shots at, at, at unnamed people. And I, and I, I take blame for, for that earlier. Um, I take responsibility for it. What did Eskashos mean back in your day? And I, let, me, let, me, let me add a little bit of me to that question. You know, a few months ago, I was involved in a project where the idea of the project was to tell the story or, or no, to talk about his gashos. What was interesting was when the question that became, okay, what's <laughs> made his gashos? And it very quickly, I'm not even here, I'm not even going to to be hiker the different opinions. What was interesting was is how different the opinions were. Because it's such a, it's such a like ambiguous word or subjective word that people can take it in all different directions, right? And 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 which which makes it a pro- not a problem, but makes it very challenging when that becomes the defining idea. Because, what what did it mean in your? You see what I'm asking? What the, what did it mean in your day? What 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 role? What like what what we did? Was it something that everyone spoke about the whole time? Was it was it the I'll, I'll give you another example. Today, a lot of people will say, you go on shlichus to be a makosher. When? The khur, the reason you go on shlichus to, is to be a mamali, the shlichus. That's what a shliach does. A shliach goes to be, right? To, to, to accomplish the shlich, That A shliach is there for the shlichus. It's, but today, a lot of people say the shlichus is there for the shliach. You see what I'm saying? So what was it like when you were a bacher? <laughs> No, no, because I didn't plan this, but it's a, it's an important question. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to be here till till some chastera. <laughs> so, so well, you might be, huh? <laughs> so let, 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 let me tell you something. The Rebbe definitely made his kashos more prominent, more uh, eager. And I'm going to say a statement about the Rebbe for a second, if I may, and then we'll start at the beginning. The Rebbe was a radical makusha. Yeah. To the Friedrich Rebbe. By the way, Rabbi Yale was a radical Makusha. I don't want to get into all the stories, whatever. Yeah. The Rebbe was the greatest Chassid and the greatest Rebbe. And this is something which I don't think today's Chassidim, Chapov, it's like, it's like there's an inferiority complex that you have to always say greater, better, and, and like without being greatest, what came before. And you don't realize how the Rebbe has a bitl to the Friedrich Rebbe and he's running to the oil. What's he doing at the oil? He can't accomplish in his office. He could do the same exact thing. He has no agbolus. But but the Rebbe's walking into the davening with, with the siddur of, of the Rebbe the Shrey. He needs it. Right. Like, so he's a chosid. She'en kamoy with the gmosi. But tachlis a bitl and, and kabolus oil to the Friedrich Rebbe. At the same time, he's... The next level, but and that's that's the unbelievable thing about the Rebbe. That he kochts in all the Rebbeim more than any other Rebbe, right. with all the Friedrich Rebbe's uh, history, which we're not going to take away. Without the Friedrich Rebbe, we know nothing. But who's the one who made t- took a vort of the of the Friedrich Rebbe Chassidus Shpizen? Now every night he's talking about Chassidus Shpizen by by and Sukkot. Right. Right. And who's the one who made a fabrengen by every single game in the park of the Rabbeim? Yeah. Who's the one who comes in with a safer that Tzemach Tzedek said, oh, new safer was printed? Now that itself is a cause of fabrengen. So I'm saying, you know, people forget that point and they think, yeah, we're going to talk about the Rebbe. Yeah. yeah, so this is where the mistake is. It, it, it's not a stira. Yeah. It has to go together. Now, we're rewinding a bit, yeah? Yeah. Nothing more has to be added to chapter two of the Chanya. Patek Bays. You're pushing the Tanya over here. Yes. Nothing more has to be added in a way. Uh-huh. If you learn Patek Bays of Lakute and Marim Tanya, Patek Bays, right. where in the same Patek where he talks about Nefesh Elikis is a Chelik Elika Mimal Mamish, he makes it clear, Kolo Dabu Tamidah Chamim, Kilo Nidwa Bishchina, 
Mamish. Right. So, so that, that's the most radical thing you could ever imagine. Why are we, why are we saying he adds twice Mamish in that Pedic? Chelik lekami mal Mamish. And over here, Kol Adov Tamid Chom Kilun Nidwat Wishchina Mamish. And he explains it. So now take a Chosid who learns Tanya Pedic Beis, and you don't need more than Pedic Beis. Right. And you live with that, what the Alter Rebbe says over there. And he says, even Peshim and are getting the highest from the Tzaddik. So, case closed. Final word. You don't need anything more than that. Which means your brain, Moya Chaben, is the Rebbe. You're the Tzipari Raglov. You're the nails. So, now once a person has that, in other words, that's why I'm very much into the ideology. Once you learn Chassidus Chabad, and you get with the, there's nobody like the Alter Rebbe making a Klorkite, you know, Lushen Azov and Admar Azokan. You learn Pedic Base from Tanya. You believe it. Once you believe it, there's nothing more that has to be said. The Rebbe is your connection to the Ebishta, as he explains the Pedic Base. Okay, now you're asking about Eskashu. So it starts with Pedic Base and Tanya. Mm-hmm. The only difference is that the Rebbe spoke about it, let's say, in Tavshin Yud and Yeralif. Like, unbelievable. Everything's connected to his kashas. Every mitzvah is connected to his kashas. Every parsha is connected to his kashas. So he brought it out more begolui, okay? But it's not a new principle. You get what I'm saying? Uh, of course, uh, so, uh, let, let me just, let me just, let me just... What I'm uh, saying is it, recap, starts, a, yeah. it starts from Pedi Beis Tanya. Did you get that? Get it. And from there, the rest is Idich Pirushu. And the Rebbe... Spoke about it more, but I want to say one thing before you say something else, which is very no, important. No, no, I'm just trying to recap what you said. But okay, ahead. no, you could whatever you want. I, I feel like I feel like the point that you're pushing here, not pushing, the point that you're making here a few times already is that a lot of these ideas have deep roots, and the, where people get lost is when they try to see it as a novelty or as a new thing, and because they, t- it's almost like you're pulling your your. You're 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 pulling at a tree that has no roots. So that's obviously gonna fall with fall with the wind. Yes. Uh, maybe. I mean, I, I'm trying to explain to you. Let's start. Let's get back to where it starts. Right. And then you don't usually have any problems. It's when you start adding, where you get the problems. I want to say one thing. Sure, sure. We're connected. I believe uh, again. The Rebbe, starting from the Alter Rebbe, when he said, what's Chabad Chassidus? Avoid the Bukhaya Chatzmei. The whole word of what is the, what is the, what is the, the distinguishing aspect of Chabad Chassidus and the contrast between Chagas. So the Alter Rebbe said it, that he wants avoid the Bukhaya Chatzmei. Not Tzadik Bermenosei, like everyone else, it's about the tzaddik having Avos Hashem and Yiddish Hashem and Yiddish Elokus and the chassidim just uh, hanging on to his coattails, whatever you call it. By Chabad, the word is that you have to have avoid the bukei chatzmei v'yadaytayim das alikei v'icha Avos. Yeah. Now there is something that the Rebbe said, and, and maybe I think this is a very important point, which is not discussed. And I think it's something that goes runs through every one of us, me, you, and every chassid. Is the Rebbe started in the beginning? He said, "Medaf alein ha'parzayin the egin and nefesh ba'amis." From day one, when it's yud shvat, you gotta transform your nefesh ba'amis. Not if you have a good father, not if you have a good mother, not if you have a good teacher. You gotta do it. You understand? In the end, chinuch means responsibility. So the whole idea of everything is that you got to do it. you got to take responsibility. So that has to be the language. And that's the story with the Rebbe, with Wine Reb. You know, there's a guy in your, you know, talk to him. You know what I'm talking about. And the same thing happened with Moshe, the Moshe You know, <laughs> you know I, 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 I already sent somebody to your town. His name is Moshe Talk to him. And then if you go through the years, it's always the same word. Shlach l'chol and then there's Purim Mem Zayin where the Rebbe said how come we're still in Golas and the Fili Rebbe tried this way and that way and the only beer that I found was that he, that he gave it over to the whole there we gotta do it and then comes Chof Ches Nissen and you know Ich Shingen Tan Al Tzvazich Dav Tan and now you do it so and then there was the lady that came to the Rebbe by dollars after Chof Ches Nissen and said Rebbe but we need you and then the Rebbe says, but if I'm the Rebbe, then you have to listen to what I'm saying. And she says, I want my son back. She starts crying. And the Rebbe just says, you know, if I'm the Rebbe, 
then you have to know that it's going to be through you and through you and through you. And that's what he does by the dollars. So I, if I may say so, I think we're not, we're still not listening. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to myself. Every person, this is the whole idea of Chinuch. The whole point of Chinuch, Exodus Chabad, is Avoida B'Koyach Atzmai. That we're not, like you said in the beginning, diluting it and dumbing down but that the person has to take responsibility. And that's what we have to ask ourselves. But and, 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 and every single conversation, and we're talking about chinuch. Okay, so I'm Mashpia. What's my job? My job is to make it He's got to take responsibility. And that's the question. How do we accomplish that? Take Each, responsibility for what? Whatever it is, you're you're yid. No, I'm saying it's a good, it's a, it's an interesting question. What 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 do you see as a success? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm connecting this to this whole point right. with the skashros and rebbe, but the the whole thing that the rebbe wants at the end of the day is like like and he always spoke about the fourth tag of shlichus that your mitzvah is with your personality, with your individuality, and you make the right decisions without me standing over you and watching you. Mm-hmm. So you're makusha. But the Rebbe wants that your eskasha should be in such a way that you're working on yourself, you're developing yourself. There's a voida. Right. But what did eskashas mean? When, what what role did it play when you were a bacher? Was it was it like something that was spoken about all the time, like it is today? I don't think it's mestich in the kamos. It was about the relationship. A bacher wants to feel close to the Rebbe. A bacher wants to feel the Rebbe is everything to him. Mother, father, etc. Uh, pe- people spoke that 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 far back then also. Yeah, to be a and say the Rebbe loves you more than your father loves you more than your mother because ain't self is elikus whatever. I'm just saying. And again, if you really well, why is that nigga? Like, why why is it nigga? It's nigga push- because because the munas tadikim means you have to look at the Rebbe as is bleakful. The Rebbe mm-hmm. says in the sicha. Chof of Tavshin Yiral or something, that even someone has a suffix, see the Rebbe Vesals, the Bielis the Chazadis, that the Rebbe said by Febreng, and I feel it's Timot the Suffolk, the Rebbe can also and Vesals. Still, you should learn the Rebbe's Chazadis. In other words, so you have to know when you're dealing with a tzaddik, you know, the Rebbe has no Agbolus. Right. Yeah, and <laughs> it's important. Yeah, it's important, I, but the question is: the question is, though, what, we're saying go back to Tanya. Call a double with Tamlachok and kill the Wishkin Mamish. Yeah, why do we have to know that? Right, because the tzaddik, the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, Perikei Shayich Vemuna, that the Ibrish to create the world, the Chilam Moshev Olivim is Hadin, Shitivim Emidz Harachmim, and the Alter Rebbe writes, Hainu Tzaddikim. Something like that. I forgot the lotion. But Bikitsa, so the Alter Rebbe is telling you, what is a tzaddik? A tzaddik is a gilil akus, and that's the point of Perik Beis. A tzaddik is a gilil akus. Right, exactly. Perik Beis, to me, is a, is a very objective, almost scientific description of of, of what a, of where the Rebbe fits in, or where the Nasi Yisrael fits in. Right? What, what, what lotion does he use? He doesn't use the lotion of an Admor. Yeah, what's, the, what's the lashon that he uses? Sadikim. Sadikim. Reish b'nei Yisrael. Right, right. So it's 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 more a science. It's, it's almost like a scientific description of of uh, ob- objective description of here here here's a tzaddik, here's the the klal Yisrael and the the and the and how like it's a guf shalim. In many ways, the more the language that feels more uh, hiskasho stick is 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 in the Akdama of uh, you know achbiyeh de makire kamina and then the whole talk about yichidus and in many ways I I don't bring that up just to to push back at your point I I think it's more that like there there's hiskasho as a idea and then there's hiskasho as it's a lived experience right and you know, it seems to me that at some point, Iskashro says a lived experience became this dominant theme. So now you're going, I think you're getting to another point now, which we didn't bring out till now. Before Gimel Tamos, there was definitely a personal relationship. So in other words, you felt that Rebbe knows you. Really? In yeah. The, in the late Mems also? Yeah. Abaka coming up in the late Mems felt that, that, that Rebbe knew him? Yeah. 
Because a, a regular bocher, his mother would have a letter from the Rebbe when she notified the Rebbe that she was pregnant with with this boy. Yeah, but you, but that's different than going into Yechidus and they were talking to you about 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 your chveis, uh, about your shetuchim, or or your friends, or what like like that. It's not the same. So I I got engaged in Tovshin Mem Mem Zion, and I got answers from the Rebbe. Right. So you're writing to the Rebbe whether to go out, whether not to go out. Right. Whether the shidduch or good shidduch. And even in the middle, when you're going and you're dating and you have a question, you write to the Rebbe and the Rebbe answered. So a bacha felt a personal relationship with the Rebbe. The Rebbe knows me. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, so right. people went to dollars. Right. Bacharim. Right. Right. I mean, I'm saying you don't have to come on to, 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 to a muna. Right. It was like in Das Tachan, especially somebody whose father was Lubavitcher, whose mother's Lubavitcher, that the years and years of experience of of Yechidison that they had, you know, your your grandfather is a very Moshemtiv, a very Moshemtiv. So of course you felt ah, I'm saying there's a connection. I felt there's a connection through him, or he felt that there's a connection. No, I'm talking about I'm saying you, by by being a grandson of a very Moshemtiv. Yeah. I don't exactly know. I'm losing my. What year were you born? Oh, I, I didn't. I, I was a young boy by Gilman Thomas. But, um, um, I mean, I don't know. You have to ask my uncles what they felt. It, your mother might have. Were you, were you, how old were you by Gilman Thomas? How old I look? I, I, no, I was, a, I was a boy. I was a boy. Was so, my five, friend, five, your five. mother might have a, a letter. Yeah, but say there. It, okay, there's two things. Does the Rebbe know who I am? And then there's two questions Do I have evidence for it? And then, in general, are are we? Are, do you see the Rebbe as as a regular person or as a extraordinary person who knows things in ways that you don't know? So that's one. Sh- that's, but there's a second tzad here, which is what do you like? What do you know that the Rebbe knows? Right, the, not on the Muna, not so so so. Once upon a time, right, the the Bacher went in and he has this, you know, and he the Rebbe asks the Rebbe says, "Oh, I I know this about you and that about you, and I heard this about you, and I think you know." There are stories like that, and people enjoy those stories for a reason. I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to complain about about the passage of time. No, because you asked about the I'm trying to understand because it sounds to me almost like the, like the times you grew up in, and and you've also reinforced the point a few times. This whole emphasis on derashvi, and and this kind of turn, like not a way, but like like going on its own path. It doesn't sound like 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 your experience as a bacher. But then that did become the the kind of language, especially in the late in the late mems and and then the nuns and so on, or or you don't or you don't see that. I'm not, I'm not. No, I I, I I I can only talk about my own experiences. Right. And I, I want to bring out that when we were before Gimel Tamos, Mister Average Bacher felt a personal connection mm-hmm. in Das Tachten. Uh-huh. So. Like look at look at take a Kesha Brach. I'm saying I wasn't so much into it like other Bachim. There are much more. Or take Bachim. Why, Why not? Because Rachman al Islam, Rachman al Come on. No, because there were always different types. There's different Chassidim. So the so the Nevelis, the Kremenchukas, so the so the you know Nikolayev. Well, what were you doing there during Kesha Brach that you weren't into it? What does that mean? I would be there. If, let's say I wouldn't stand stay there every single minute. Rachman al Islam. Maybe I was tired. I went upstairs. I wouldn't leave 770 come of them, but I'm just saying an example. So not all the Bachman stayed the whole time. They would stay the whole time, but left after they were in the in the mamish in the heat of it, like like you uh-huh. know, whatever you know. Not every bacha never missed a mincha. You know, you went to a dentist or somebody, were, were but there would be somebody else who would never miss a mincha. Were there bacha and their kesha bacha were upstairs learning? If you were upstairs, it was a hookup, don't get me wrong. So you heard the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But say, so what was going on upstairs that so you would go upstairs for? The people were learning. Nothing. The microphone was on. No, but you went upstairs. What were you yeah, doing? Yeah, maybe there? if it was some chastera, kesha bracha. You had a lot to catch up. My friend, the Sedra and stuff like that. So the so Bracha upstairs being my friend, during Keshe Bracha. If Keshe Bracha was three hours, let's say he was there for an hour, Rachman yeah. al-Islam, he wasn't such a chosid, and he went upstairs to sit down. Why, why do we feel a need to say Rachman al-Islam? I'm saying that. What do you care? Did, did you feel that way then? Yeah. 
I have to, I, you know, like I make a, I make a joke, but it's not really a joke. No, I'm trying. Nachman al I never opened up the door for the Rebbe. When he came to the 770, I wish I would have had that schos. Why is Nachman al Because I can tell you a story that Rebiel said that had a tremendous impact on my life. Uh-huh. Should I tell you the story? Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is a story that Rebiel said. Give me an example about Rebiel and that it's printed, this story is printed in L'Shema Eisen. There's two stories, but I'll just say one story, but this one I heard from Rebiel. The Isaac Homeler, who is an amazing, amazing Halber Rebbe, even though we say it about the Hillel, yeah. but the Isaac Homeler, we have seen this from him. The right. Isaac Homeler was, was uh, before he passed away. He's laying in bed, and he was not, so happy, jovial is that a word in English? He wasn't so happy, but then only, only in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so then he was happy, and his Talmudim saw that he was getting like he was before that he was like depressed, and then he was smiling and he was happy. So then they asked him, like, what, what happened? What's going on? And he said, you know, he thought to himself, he was like passing away. My Torah mitzvahs, my chatos, my tefil be'er v'rab b'shar matas le. What's it worth? It's gone to Right. But then I remembered one time I was walking along, and the Haltreb was sitting and learning, and a wind came, and blew away a bletel of the Haltreb sefer, and I got that bletel and I brought it back to the Haltreb, oh. and with them geich l'mayla, he said with them geich l'mayla, but those are shimush tamidichacham. And the Talmudim were like, wow. Like they they laughed. And then I think that, that, that Isaac said, like, what's what are you laughing about? The, I think he said the same Emesa Shimush or or Emesa Tamil Chachm. I forgot exactly. Right. But the point is, here's a, so Rabbi Yale is bringing out the point that Rabbi Isaac Homale, mit vos getel amayla, was at Mishamish Grindal to Rebbe one time. Dos. So, <laughs> can you imagine? You're a chassid, you listen to Rabbi Yale, he's for bringing. And he's saying such a story changes your life. That means the most... Uh, but you the, went on shlichas. Who? You did. But the, I heard this when I was a bacher. But I'm saying you went on shlichas. Why is that not shimush? It is shimush, but you know what? I'm not I'm not asking you to be a smart aleck. Yeah. And, and I'm not, I, wasn't I, asking, I, I wasn't asking earlier about the Rahman Slan about, about, about Kishra Brach to be a smart aleck either. Um, no, I, so I'm saying... I, I, I'm asking it because it, it almost... It, 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 it's in fact the question that I'm asking. So I'm telling you, there's different types of chassidim. No, but, but why do we have to, why do we have I'm to, saying it because, you know, you have to. No, but like, no, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying though is, doesn't, like, like you can't do everything. We can't stand to Naval chassidim, right? And, 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 like, why is it that, that we, like you know, you say you weren't by Kish, the entire Kishu Bracha Rachman Slan, but but how many people say that they were by Kishu Bracha and they weren't Ma'ariv Sedra Rachman Slan? Never goes other way; it only goes this way. Why? Is right. it is it, is it because of Gimel Tamos? Is it because no, no, of no? My answer would be that each person should look themselves, and and uh, well, you know they say expression in English: "Man's got to know his limitations." Right. So you got to know a uh, 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 why do we so, so, so my question is: Is this a is this a is this a form of striving for the impossible, or is this Rahman al Islam? I, I, no, I feel like it's different. So don't take symptom kushute. You know, sometimes I tell my. No, I'm not trying to catch you on exactly. So, no, no, I'm I, trying to understand what you're saying. Sometimes I tell my talmidim, not everything I do is meduik. So. No. I'm so, explaining, I'm explaining. No, but are, is it is it true regret that you have? Or is it that you're saying, look, I wish I could have done everything? Is it, is it, it's a bit of regret, but not, maybe not enough. What I mean to say is, you know, so the, so the, a mice. But why is there regret is my question. Why is there regret? Like, uh, what were you Because so, I'll, you, I'll tell you the you're truth. Not, you're upset that you weren't perfect. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. <laughs> what I mean to say is, is that, I, is, that how, is that how they daven in Australia? <laughs> no. What I mean to say is, I look at some people, some chasteira, and they're jumping up and down, and they're besimcha. And I, I know it's felt by me. I don't have that level of enthusiasm and excitement in the simcha shal mitzvah by our coffers, like like plenty ben plenty. Uh-huh. I wish I did. 
So now it's something that I have to I have to look at that person and say, I aspire to have that mile say too. That, say that, that. That's fine, but it's not a chaman l'tzlan that I'm not like that. That's that's my question. No, because I'm not trying to catch you on a word. It's more that a lot of times there's this kind of thing where like, because even the thing that you said about Isaac Hummler, it's 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 a it's a beautiful story, and it, there's there, there there's a resonance to it. In many ways, it's it's kind of similar, I think, to the parts of the Baal Shem Tov. And the Shaman comes into this world to do a Teva Freyid. Like there's a sense with Chassidus and in general with Pirin Satera that that you don't know what you're in this world for, right? And there are sometimes these things that might seem arbitrary, like very small. But in them, in them, I say the answer meister, right? And 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 that's in many ways, it's a very powerful and beautiful idea. Like don't, don't construct this logical architecture of, of meaning and purpose. Life's a lot more mysterious and profound than that, and you don't know where where, where you're gonna find the spot, right? Um, it's a beautiful idea, but a lot of times that that can kind of spin out of control. So let me. The ganz chesidus is. To hold the door for the rabbit, right? And then you you end up with Shpitz Chabad. Yeah, and then you end up with Shpitz Chabad, and you end up with, 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 with this kind of thing where if I dress this way and I'm standing in the right place at the right time, and the, and the Bachar who who maybe didn't understand the the you know, the the, 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 the the importance of the moment and was busy, I don't know, being my said Rahman Lutzlan. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it goes yeah, yeah. there. So, so two things. Number one, the sachak of everything is was mem and mont von sich is alt besser. So, uh-huh. the sachak always is to demand from yourself more. That's what it's all about. And we're talking about mont von sich. Uh-huh. Yeah. My next point is, I believe this is a separate discussion. We have to make a book of the chidush of the Rebbe. Uh-huh. One of the main chidush of the Rebbe, which I don't think you find. In, in the Chassidus with the other Abayim as much, is, and that's part of the idea why Rosh Hashivah's material and then and, and Mashpi'im material went on Shlichus, is by the Rebbe, one of the main things is an Avoida which transcends Kavim. That's like one of the Rebbe's main inyonim. I think One second, one second. Is that a, is, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but you said this thing about the Rosh Hashivah's Mashpi'im that went... Yeah. Is I mean, it, I mean, Rosh Hashiv material. Yeah, is that something? Must be material. I understand. Is that something that you regret? What do you mean? I'm talking about there's people out there. Yeah, is, this, is that something that makes you sad, knowing knowing what was lost? No, no. Because the Rebbe knows better than me. Uh-huh. You know, it's like the Maisa with the, the, the Biyasla Balagola. The Alt Rebbe told this Chosid that he had to become Balagola. Yeah. And whenever I say this story, I would say this story like imagine if the Rebbe would call him the Biel. I say you have to become a taxi driver. Right. But the Rebbe, and then after you finish... There, there would have been a lot of car accidents. <laughs> and, then, and then after he was Makar of that person, right. then the middle Rebbe told him many years later, now you, you finish your shlichus. Right. By the way, I was by a Fabrengen once Shabbos in the Mems where the Rebbe said over the story. And he said the story, Asada Shliach, the shluchim, they go on a shlichus, and they feel what are they accomplishing, and they're there for many years. And the Rebbe brought the Maisa from Rabbi Yosef Balagola by the Fabrengen, and he said, Hastuv mer, you know, more than one soul. So what are you complaining about? Right. And the Rebbe said the word, Shlichus, I'm a part of Shlichus, and this shot me feel like a shaft. It's not that you're running a business like you have to see what you gain, what you, that's it. Anyways, so you were saying there was so, so one of the things I believe that's Mamish, one of the Rebbe's main chidushim, is and it's based, I think, on what he says in the Sikh of Ach Shapesach Lamad Vov, Atomim is Anochasat Musay. Anochasat Musay means connected with, you, you, you lay yourself down, so Atomim can else. Right. You gotta be Shmayonki? You gotta say a Pilpul and Nigla? You gotta say a Meri de Kevort and Chsidis? Whatever it is, the call of the hour. Your leadership skills, and you're there in public service. And you're a one-man army. You could do whatever is demanded, the call of the hour. But that means, and, and the Rebbe said it, in, I think in Numbez, maybe Vayigash, or maybe in Aleph, the, the whole take on the Fabreng was, Yosef has to do the Aved of Yehuda, Yehuda has to do the Aved of Yosef, and that's the sign of Mashiach. Right. And that's what the Rebbe, Gimont, many Memorim, many Sikhs come to this point, your Avedis Hashem 
has to transcend a tzir. Yeah, transcendence, yeah. Yeah, now obviously, the one who's mostly, if you're talented in, in this way, usually you utilize that. But, but at the same time, don't get stuck in it. Right. That's the word. So I'm answering you. What, what are you answering? You're answering about... Wait, how, wait, wait. That the bacher, who's, who's one way, has to always look at the mile of the other way yeah. and realize, you know... Right, right. No, I, 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 the reason I, I came back to that point about it is because it's a, it's it's something that I keep on noticing, and you know maybe I'm a hammer looking for a nail, but you know this 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 idea of what you're talking about of of transcending limitations and 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 iskalus akavin, however whatever the the right words for it is, where where you're you're able to. Um, not even combine, but to hold different opposites and 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 you know together. Somehow, it, when you in general, that's that that's asking a lot. Almost, it's almost the 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 idea of tzaddik. It's it's asking levels that are that are not that are not apparently accessible to 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 most people. I, I'm not arguing with what was said, but when there says I'm a chulam tzaddik, when everyone's a tzaddik. Okay, say there. I, I understand that's what he said. I don't know what that means, right? Uh, because a tzaddik is still a tzaddik, and I'm still who I am, and this person still who he is. I don't know how the math works. It's it's a divine math that I don't understand. Um, but in practice, you know, very often instead of what instead of holding things in tension, things just become a balagan, right? And and benegel in yonenu, when you're talking about his kashros, you know, I, I, I there, there's something like, like it almost, it almost feels like it was inevitable that it would, it would come to dominate everything because asking someone to, to take learning Chassidus seriously and Chitas and my Reset design, whatever the things that you were doing, and also Keshe it's what do you, what do you, what do you want from pe- like people? And not only that, you're not just by Kesher Bracha to be by Kesher Bracha. You're by Kesher Bracha because every time there was out, out you had, that's all that there is. How, like, how does, I, I don't see how that ends up in a, in a, in a, in a, in a stable, forget about healthy, in a stable, um, like, lasting uh, life, life, like, 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 way of life. I, I see Balagan and, 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 and confusion and um, yeah, that's what a uh, wildkite, and and that's what happened. It's not just me predicting. That's what happened in, in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases, you know, this whole kind of the the, the this whole kind of uh, veering off into spitz chabad and and and, and, and all this stuff. I'm sure they have their value, and I'm sure they have their 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 reasons for what <laughs> for what they were doing. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, how, like how do you how do you how do you, how do you tie? When it came to Tanya earlier, you're like Tzitzalik is, is 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 we we need to know where the mountain top is, right? But but how how does is, can we say the same thing about his kashos? Or or is this or is this kash, like in many cases at least what I remember from Yeshiva and I remember from my friends is his kashos is a mountain top that doesn't tolerate you living at the bottom of the hill, like, like anything less than the mountain top is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So first of all, there's a there's a gem video with some person I forgot who tells the Rebbe. You know, I don't think I could ever call myself a chassid. Right. And, and like he's talking to the Rebbe, like right. I feel bad or something like that. I forgot the, how it starts, but it was, but then the Rebbe tells him the following: If you work on yourself, that every single day will be better than the day before. I'll be honored or something to call you my chassid. Something like that. That's what it answers. So I think we have to first, and I'm going to say something else. Let's say I have a family. Yeah, but, is, but isn't that a loosening of the terms that you were talking about earlier? No, because I want to give another marshal. You have okay. a father and he has 10 kids. Now, we're not talking about the, a rebel, okay? That's like a separate. But generally speaking, yeah, he, has, he has 10 kids, let's say. And they all, they all like the parents. Right. And, and, and it's all positive. But whatever, one of them is more like this. Yeah. One brings up the love. Different. They're, they're different. They're different. 
And, and the father knows that, you know, Echot Tzadik, Echot Shliach, Echot Rov, Echot Rosh Hashiva, Echot, whatever. You understand what I'm trying to say? They're right. different. So it's the same thing. The Chosid, it's a, I, I want to go back to the point. We felt, we love the Rebbe. And, and, and so one person, his Mesiris Nefesh is going to be that he's going to Tferiz Kedim Levi a couple of times a week to, you know, like you say about this pro bono, you know, getting paid for something. Like that. He's doing mitzvahs for the Rebbe. They're living to give the Rebbe nachas. Right. And they want to feel closer to the Rebbe. And, and that's what, in other words, there's a general, a general feeling. I want to be from the Rebbe's boys. I want to be from the Rebbe's boys. Now, some people have a tonus and nefesh that they're going to stay every single minute by Kesha Bracha. What happens if you had another bacher who didn't feel, you know, that his iskashrus, that his dafka, that he has to be there every single second? So maybe someone else looks at him like, you, you idiot. Could be. But that person still feels love to the Rebbe and and his iskashrus, my tzchus, that he gets up see this every single morning on time right. and doesn't miss it. And he's doing it because of his iskashrus. But his iskashrus, the tzchus in that way. And this is, this is a general point. Which 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 is a, should be an objective, but daf kenen alach sidim sidim ein mishpacha, but daf kenen zitzen of ein tish, and and the kremen chuke with the nevela with the nikolayver, you know each one has to be able to sit and and realize this is another whole subject, <laughs> agree to disagree, yeah. that's it. Du bist a nevela, zay a nevela. Du bist a kremen chuke, zay a kremen chuke. Du bist a nikolayver, zay a nikolayver. Each one has to be. True to Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehudi, Yisachi, each one is different ways. Right. How you bring out your eskashnos. But, but the main thing is, the Dovar Shove by everyone is that, that they love the Rebbe, they want to bring out, and that they're living to make bring the Rebbe Nachas. Right. That's what their life's about. Right, it's inter- I mean, it's interesting you're bringing up the Shvatim now, thinking as you're saying it. It's interesting that until the Shvatim, until the Shvatim, there was always this fight between the two sons. It was there was Yitzchak and Yishmael. There was Yaakov and Esav, and one son won, and the other son, in terms of Yiddishkeit, was that's it. You're out, right? The Shvatim they fought. They fought, they fought a lot, right? But but there there was this idea mitas They're all part of it, right? And and that's how Klal Yisrael started. That's where it went from being. Um, like this, like this line to being something that goes horizontal, and of course, the next generation just gets more and more diverse, and you end up having Dustin and Avirim. You know, it, 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 but they're all they're all on some level part of Klal at that point. And yeah, it's, it's interesting that you're saying that. Um, just a thought that occurred to me. The, the, think... the, the idea of being sitting at this at the table, by the way, that's a symbolism of the podcast in many ways. I, it's always at a, at a table. It, it happened in many ways by happenstance. It just it happens to be that in most places there's a table, and so. You, but I was thinking about it. There's a symbolism there where, like, if we need to sit. What's me zayin zayin me or bechidim zayin me? Yeah, we can sit at the table, right? You know, I don't have to agree with the person next to me, and most of the time the person doesn't agree with me, and that's what we say there. Like, you can sit at the table. A table gives you what's a mice of a table? A table means you have some distance. You have so you have a, space. You have a buffer Safe space zone. Yes, you have a buffer zone. You have a buffer zone, right? And and you have advance warning if the if the if, if the potato salad is being thrown your way. But but you're fart at the same table, right? And that that the, the, on one hand it gives you your your spaces, but it also it also brings you together. And yeah, so I, I think what you're saying at least the way I'm understanding what you're saying, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, is is Gashros in many ways. It, it's it, it the question is how is it defined is it defined as something that is achieved through the the, the makusher the through the chassid in which case it takes a different form and a different shape in each person and like you said if you know one person he his connection he finds in in kashal bracha Another person, his connection, he finds in in waking How up is sometimes. The yeah, yeah, and and another person, strangely enough, finds his connection in being my cetera, whatever it is, right? And in that in that sense, it, it, the skashus becomes it, it, it's something. It's almost like what, what, what I think the Rebbe explains about shemen, right? You don't eat oil on its own, but it's mifafei b'chol daver. 
right? It's in everything, but it's never really on its own because it's it's too pure to have on its own. Although today people are starting to, interestingly enough, people are starting to have olive oil on its own for health benefits. But, you know, it's is is something that you find in everything, but it's it's not it's not something that you can define on its own because on its own it becomes balagan. You know, what I mean, and, and very uniform. I, and I think that to me is I don't know if you meant it as an answer, but to me that's an answer that I can take you know, that I can understand. Where it, if you if you're trying to what's pure distilled hiskashus that everyone well, good luck. I mean, it, it, it it's it's. It's too pure. It's too pure, and in a way, by making it objective and official, you're losing the whole point, right? Because if, if, if I don't connect with what you're calling connection, then what's the point? Right? If you're going to force down a, a, a strain of escashers down my throat that doesn't make me feel connected, then am I really connected? So to recap... Is that, is that a fair assessment of what you're saying? Yeah, but I, I would put it to, to, to be Magdalit Raishi is first there's a sense of loyalty, like like a child to a parent. So to like like you have to ask yourself the question: Am I from, am I one of the Rebbe's boys? So so and and it's an honest question: What makes me one of the Rebbe's boys? You know, right. and, and if you're honest, you'll ask yourself that question and then try to live up to that. Now. I think another thing about the Rebbe's Chidushim is I don't think any other leader... What, what, what do you mean by the Rebbe's boys? What, what's, what, what's the point that you're making? Like, like if someone asks, are, are you Makusha to your father? Right. I hope you are. Like, connection on a very basic level. Yeah. Like, you, you think about, is, is my father happy? How's my father doing? Right. And you care about your do father. Do I care? Do I care? Yeah. Yeah. So the Skashus means the Rebbe is like... The, the, Overrides everything else in a way, you know. Right. If you're honest, do you I know, ca- do I care? Yeah, right. and then and then how do you express it? Right, but and that's lo- a, that's already more specific to the person. Yeah, and, and loyalty, right? Loyalty. So I wanted to say two points. I'm gonna, oh, so I'm saying the chiddush of the Rebbe. One of the chiddush of the Rebbe that I believe nobody else spoke about this dichotomy about bittel and Mitz- and mitzis. Yeah, yeah. And really, it starts from the Alter Rebbe. Like Domus Hamalakit is one of the most modern documents that ever was written. It's amazing. We're not going to get into it now. It's so late. Okay. But the whole idea of Dak Domus Hamalakit is the Alter Rebbe saying, because the person is asking, what about me? Where's my place in Judaism? Right. Now, you think about it, the Alter Rebbe is not talking like a right-wing fundamentalist preacher. He'll say, what's Frex the Kashis? Right. Kabbalah sale. Right. What do you mean? And the whole Sefer Tanya is is trying to keep your individuality and how you should feel excited about Yiddishkeit right. and to find your path, your individualistic path. Right. And at the same time, there's Judaism, yeah? Now the Rebbe, Koshkin Vakal I don't think anybody ever spoke about this Bittal and Metzias together, how you, you there's a greater cause Right. Become part of something greater than yourself, right. but at the same time retaining your specific individuality. Yeah. So it's the same thing with this kashrus. Right. It's about you transcending, you becoming part of something which is greater than yourself. But the Rebbe wants you to be you, like you said. If somebody's going to try to force it down and it doesn't gel, it's not in sync with your individuality, right. then it's not going to work. Right. And you see always by the Rebbe this approach. Like, there's a story about that coach, I forgot what his name was. You know, the the guy who was a coach for the Harlem Globetrotters, yeah. he stood by for Brady. So the, the, the story starts off that he showed up to 770 one day and he just told the Rebbe, I'm a coach. And the Rebbe said, that's what I need right now in my life, a coach. Like episodes eight, that's the way the story goes. In other words, the Rebbe knew how to, <laughs> everyone fits into the Rebbe's family, into the Rebbe's mission. Right. He needs a coach also, right. you know? Right. So, you know, Ben C. Afton, we need you. Uh-huh. With your individuality, I with your talents, it. I appreciate it. With your energy, I appreciate it. But but that comes with the disclaimer that you're speaking from yourself and not on behalf of any official. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling kidding. you, I'm just kidding. In case you had any doubts, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No, I, I, I very much appreciate this conversation. Um, I, I think a lot of people will appreciate this conversation. To be honest, I think, um, yeah, I, I, so I appreciate you making the time, and I appreciate that sentiment and. Um, thank you very much for making the time.
I yeah. want to add one more point, sure. which was which is lacking, and I think sure. this is something for everyone to think about, is the word primius. Mm. Primius. You know, Chabad Mon Primius. I think if we, we just shake up the bottle, put that ingredient into the mix of everything we spoke about, like you were talking about how deviating, how somebody can make a mistake, and you said something like Spitz Chabad, and etc. If, 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 if we focused on Primius, it's a big word, but 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 the word focusing on primis means always a chosser is a primi, so he'd be an inward directed person. He wouldn't be easy to judge somebody. He wouldn't be critical. He wouldn't be judgmental. Only on himself, but not about others. So I think if we put that word into everything we spoke about till now, a lot of problems also would be taken oh, care. Yeah, I for think. Sure. Well, for, well, I know how. When when you when you primis means that you have to touch it up in, in words that mean something to you. Oh. And it's very hard to get lost. It's a very good way of not getting lost in fantasias when you have to, you know, you, you can argue about all kinds of esoteric ideas if if you don't have to pay the price for it. Uh, You're it, saying Primus is real. It makes it, 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 make, it, cost, it makes it cost something, right? Like, uh, if you have to pay for it, you have to pay it, you earn it. Yeah. Well, Maybe if I can ask a question, this might be opening a Pandora's box, but it might, it, it, it might be less than a double shalom if I don't ask it. When you came to Australia as a mashpia, what what did you feel your message was at the beginning? Because we, we, you painted the picture of what what you were leaving. What did you feel you had to bring to the Buckerman or the the Kehil in Australia at the time? I, I look at myself like like... Like you have in the army, and you have the sergeant, and you have the troops, or you could say coach. And I think it's very important for every mashpia, and yeshiva in particular. You have to talk to the Talmud and say, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'll be there for you 24-7 if you have any questions to help you, and this and that, and go through you know, whatever you feel. But then what are you going to do for me? In other words, we have to be on the same page. And what's the same page? We want to win the championship. In other words, what do you want to accomplish? In other words, the Bachar has to work together with the Mashpi and the Mashpi has to work together with the Bachar. What we want to accomplish is like we said before, Num de Papir Nechsidis, Machvalebedekhsidis. You want every person to feel how the Rabbeim were, were the greatest, greatest tzaddikim and that their message is Mamish alive and Mamish is the guiding light. You know, this. The Pandora's box is about looking for help outside Chassidus, which is another whole conversation. <laughs> I don't think we're starting that right now. <laughs> I would love to, but time uh, is short. Yeah. I know. So we, we we have to talk about Tanya and the Agdom Samalakit and how the Alter Rebbe says that this is the answer to any question you have in Avodah Hashem, and etc. etc. But 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 that's it. That's the, our job is to take Divir Rabbi Seinu and make it relevant and how every single person should feel sometimes I tell a Bach, you know what your problem is? is you were born in a religious home because if he was a Balchuva and he, and, he, and he would see the contrast he would, wow, there's nothing like Chassidus so the message is gates in the drachim shanchilu rabbi seinu nesiyenu that's what it's all about my job is to is to give over that. And, that and that was how you felt from day one yeah that's it. To make Limba Dachsidis and Dark Echsidis the person's way of life. And then he's going to have the best life. But Gashmi is also. That's what I feel. On that note, thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, have a wonderful Yom Tiv. Have a Amen. wonderful Amen. Uh, remaining time here in New York. And uh, thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Thank you.